Our, our team has rescued over 20 between it. Our staff and our partners, which is sad because for every bonobo orphan that you rescue, at least one was killed. Um, but the, there was one that we named Iboko because she came from a place called Iboko. And we were in our office in Bondica. It's kind of a crossroads on the Congo River and, a, you know, crossroads for the bushmeat trade, uh, among other trade. Um, and we had, our, our office has kind of a balcony looking over a street, and we saw this guy riding down the street on a bicycle with a bonobo. And so our guys, you know, tore out after him and went and got the police, and we were able to confiscate this, this baby. And she was, you know, it was so sad. I mean, she was so dehydrated, and the guy was eating a popsicle, like a frozen thing. She wanted it, and he wouldn't share it with her because it took us a while to get her off his person and into our care because we had to have the police help, you know, help us, which is, you know, we've learned a lot through these things because people don't, the hunters don't actually know that it's against the law to hunt bonobos a lot of times, you know, and that's part of our work is to raise awareness, and even the police force didn't know it was against the law when we first started. Um, they didn't know bonobos were endemic to their country, and they didn't know that they were, you know, endangered and protected by international and their own national laws. So anyway, um, but Iboko, she was just, you know, this poor little baby, and she was dehydrated, and she was scared, and, you know, getting her, finally getting her and just holding her and trying to feed her. You know, we got oranges and, you know, different fruits, but she was so thirsty that we tried to get fluid into her at first. And then she, we really bonded. Um, she, I was with her for a week in Bondica before we could fly her back to Kinshasa to the sanctuary. and. Just like a bonobo, you know, wild in the wild, she never, she clung to me all the time. You know, babies are always clinging to their mothers. Um, and, um, and so, you know, we ate together and she'd sit, we tried to, you know, feed her different foods. And of course we got a baby bottle and we're giving her milk and, um, and she was curious, you know, as she started getting, regaining her strength and feeling more comfortable, um, she, you know, she was more playful. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, we peed, she peed all over me a lot. I mean, that, ha that happened. <laughs> but taking bathing together and, you know, giving her a little bath and, um, and sleeping together. And there's, there is a picture, but I so remember this, where she was, she was wrapped around my head, you know, and she was just about that long, and she curled up right like that. And it was, I mean, other people would take her sometimes, too, so she wasn't always 100% on me, but most of the time. And just, it was, it was really neat, you know, as she, we were, you know, getting her healthier physically, but also emotionally and just a lot of love and grooming her and um, but it was really telling because the the last day um, I had set when we had to fly back to Kinshasa I had set the alarm for five o'clock in the morning and this is something I actually talk about in my talks a lot of times um, because it's just metaphorical, um, but she, I'd set the alarm for five o'clock, so, and it was pitch black dark, and the, the, the alarm goes off, and I'm like, you know, groping around for the alarm clock, and it's not where I put it, and finally, I find my flashlight, and I turn it on, and Iboko had grabbed the alarm clock, and she's like, you know, inspecting what is this weird thing, making all this noise, and I'm kind of biting it, licking it, and, um, and I just, you know, I thought that was ironic because the, the alarm is, a, is going off for her species. You know, the time is running out. 
But it was so traumatizing to to have to let her go. I, I really had bonded with her emotionally. I really loved her. And uh, a friend of mine ran an airline, and so we were, we rode in the cockpit all the way to Kinshasa, and she rode on my lap. And when we got her to the sanctuary, um, you know, I had to, it was evening, and I, I had to let her go into a cage. You know, she's going to sleep by herself, not with somebody. And it was hard. I mean, I, I really loved her. And you, you, you feel motherly, you know, you feel like it's your child because they're so human-like. They're so, she was so aware and she had her own personality, you know. She, everybody fell in love with her in Bondica and, um, and we took her to the police. I mean, she was like a little ambassador too, you know, we took her to educate people, and we had a lot of visitors coming to our office to see her. And uh, she just had such a sweetness. And, you know, as she recovered, I, I don't know how to describe. Mm-hmm. Well, it was more that it wasn't just that she was needy and taking from us. It was like she was giving us something too. You know, she was participating and she was caring even. <laughs>